To Valerie, the world reacts today at the stunning outcome of the U.S. presidential election. Donald Trump shocked many to become the president-elect. Political blogger David Yonkai joins us now with the analysis. David, thanks for being here Happy today. to be here. So it was quite the night to watch, uh, an historic night for sure. How did Trump pull off the stunning upset and what does the country do now to unite? Well, the, how he won was he actually held the states that Mitt Romney took in 2012. And then what he did is he built up big majorities in parts of the battleground states that he needed to. We could take Pennsylvania as an example. He carried a lot of counties that are traditional Republican counties and he built up those majorities. And ironically, Hillary Clinton outperformed Barack Obama in 2012 in Pennsylvania, but yet she lost the state because he targeted those big majorities. So now, what is next? Uh, we saw Trump last night um, after Clinton apparently called him. He made his speech, and I think many people uh, were pleased, even those that are not Trump fans. Oh, yeah. It was a very measured speech. He was very gracious toward her, and I think that he set the right tone. Now, we saw Hillary Clinton decide to wait. Uh, she did not speak last night. Um, she was criticized a little bit for that. Uh, do you think that's proper criticism, or was she right to wait till today? I really think it's improper criticism, and I'll tell you what, for two reasons. Number one, it was 2.30 in the morning, and to give a concession speech at 2.30 in the morning is not giving an opportunity to talk to the American people. I remember the 1972 convention where George McGovern gave a convention speech at 4 o'clock in the morning. From a... From, from a um, a, um, a communication standpoint that was a good thing. And also it gave her time to think. Because yeah, I talked to um, um, a guy who ran for Wilkes-Barre mayor last year, Frank Sork, today, and he said that you never know the toll that a candidacy takes on a person who wins or loses. So I think it was a good thing for her to wait, be measured, and uh, give a speech to people and be gracious herself. Now, we saw both Hillary Clinton and President Obama speak today. They say give Donald Trump a chance. Um, what do you think the next couple of weeks are going to be like uh, as the Democrats uh, transition to the Republicans? in the White House. Well, I always say that you have to watch who the president brings with him. And it's going to be very telling as to who he's going to pick, who he's going to reach out to. And don't forget, as we spoke earlier, earlier in the year, he ran against his own party. So there's a lot of people that he's going to have to reach out to, and they're going to have to reach out to him. Now, uh, the U.S. Senate race in Pennsylvania was uh, highly contested. I heard, David, that it was the most expensive Senate race uh, ever. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but that was what one report said. Toomey ended up winning, so now Republicans have control of the White House and Congress as well. Yeah, they have control of the entire branches of government. And the one thing that they need to remember is that, um, you know, now they have to perform. And in terms of voter turnout yesterday, uh, what do you think? Uh, was it more than expected? It's about 65%. And Donald Trump actually made history. We always said that Hillary Clinton would make history by becoming the first um, woman president. Donald Trump became history by becoming the first civilian president. He, If you look at all of the presidents that we've had in our history, um, He's the first person who never had any military experience nor any type of governmental experience. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that's going to go. Well, it seems like we're off to the right foot uh, with both candidates saying, you know, let's move forward together. However, I'm sure the controversy is uh, not completely finished just yet. We'll see how things change over the next couple of weeks and months. And David, for those who want to find out more about everything politics, how can they read your blog? Uh, Lulak, political under dot blogspot dot com. Political blogger David Yonkai, as always, thanks for your expertise. Very happy to be here. Thank you, guys. Time to get